Hello everyone, welcome to the session today on choreography script writing. The objectives for our lesson today are to get familiarized with the classroom process for planning the choreography and writing its script. To experience how choreography is performed in a language class and to understand how choreography addresses multiple intelligences. Can you tell me when nursery students are taught, how are they taught rhymes? Can somebody answer? Yes, pass on the mic please. Uh, through recitation method, our teacher used to enact, like teacher she'll enact and she'll sing the song. Uh, mostly children, they like songs when they are in a nursery level. So if teacher uh, in the singing manner or in the singing process, if she teaches, so children, uh, students, they learn uh, very easily. Okay. And what do you think? The teachers enact and what do the students do? Can somebody tell me that? Uh, they'll enjoy while doing poems, rhyming and all. They are enjoying, but why are they enjoying? What do they do? Are they sitting in the class? No. Yes, dancing. somebody? They may be playing or uh, through dancing, by screaming, okay. like that. Now, uh, do you recall uh, your nursery rhyme experience of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? In that, if you remember, your teachers enacted it. And as children, you did the same thing. You too acted as if you all were showing the stars and the sky high above, right? You can see that this particular way of choreographing, that is putting actions to poems, is not something which is limited only to lower classes. Students in the higher classes can be taught to do the same thing. Can you think uh, how a class five student can be asked to do a choreography? Any ideas? They can enact the poem like uh, they can do the role plays and small skits in the classroom. Okay, very good. Any other answers? Does anybody else want to try? How can the enactment be made better, more interesting for the student? See, in the classroom, each student might be having different uh, intelligence. One might be good in uh, music, one might be good in enacting, and one might be good in uh, script writing or other, in other thing. So, the music part, they can do with the chorus. The dancing, uh, they can act and they can dance, like how the poem is there. And uh, who is good, like who can uh, talk very good, like correct uh, pronunciation and all, they can sing that uh, poem. Yes, as you have correctly mentioned, all the different types of uh, intelligences need to be taken into consideration even when dealing with class 3 to 5 students. And uh, along with it being an oral presentation, at this level, the written component can also be introduced to them. Now, uh, let us watch how children in class 5 are performing a choreography of a poem, If a Tree Could Talk. Let's listen to the song now. Dear children, you can perform choreography now. Are you ready? Don't 
just now you have seen class 5 students putting up a performance. In a similar manner, the concept of choreographing and script writing for a song can be used even by higher level learners. This can also act as a tool to introduce them to socio-political issues and also to critically analyze poems. There are certain steps which as classroom teachers you can try to use choreography as a pedagogic tool. To summarize those, reading a poem, identifying the themes and choreographing the poem, listening to a song and choreographing it, reading posters and developing choreography based on the theme. Identifying social issues, writing posters and slogans on these and developing choreography based on the theme. Following this order, it will be a very interesting activity even for higher level learners to get introduced to the notion of choreographing and script writing. of the classroom process as we have seen is to identify the main theme which a poem is trying to present to the students. Along with the main theme, certain sub themes which form a part of the text can also be elaborated upon by using choreography and the method of script writing. This in turn can be expressed, can be presented by the students through a rhythmic movement in a manner of play acting. Here is the text of a song that has been processed for choreography script writing. As in the case of other texts, in this case the poem also needs a theme based interaction. Let us watch the classroom clipping and see how the teacher undertakes this particular lesson. Hello students, what message do you get from the picture? Yes? The cry of a girl child. The cry of a girl child. Anything else? Yes? The girl child has no freedom. The girl child has no freedom. What could be the reason for her pains? She is cruelly treated by the society. She is cruelly treated by the society. Good. Well, you have just seen how the teacher conducted the class. Now, you will see that this particular aspect has been followed up by the teacher by introducing an oral discourse as well. Let us see how that is presented by the students. In our society, the girls have less freedom. She is oppressed in several ways. This makes the girls feel insecure. You have just seen how the teacher has conducted the class. What do you think can the learners now do to take the lesson forward. What the learners can do is they can read the text individually and then share their experiences of their understanding with the rest of the class. In this way, each individual will get a chance to talk which will help to improve their speaking skills and also listening to others talking will help to improve their own ideas, the thoughts which are coming to their mind based on the theme of the poem given to them for the choreography script writing. A cage is being set for me. It frightens me. It haunts me. Should I be untrue? Should I be unreal? They say I am a girl. Where can I bury my thoughts? 
where can I take shelter? Should I be a rock? Should I be lifeless? They say I am a girl. Why is the world after me? Why is the girl cursed? Should I be blind? Should I be dumb? They say I am a girl. Thereafter, you have just seen that the students also try and respond to the extrapolatory questions which the teacher is asking. Why do you think this is necessary? When the teacher is trying to ask them questions for the students to respond to, the teacher is trying to activate the students thinking better. It is only when you ask a question and you try to answer it that your thinking starts happening. And as we all know as teachers, getting our students to think is what is most important. Also, it is only at this juncture after the students themselves have spoken about their thinking, what their ideas are, that the choreography is worked out. The first thing which the students need to do with the teacher's help is to identify the theme and the sub-themes of the poem which is given to them. Let us watch how it is done and we will continue with our discussion in a while. Yeah, what is the theme of the first stanza? What is the theme of the first stanza? Yes? The grief of a girl child. The grief of the girl child. About what? She thinks that she is in a cage. She thinks that she is in a cage. Okay, do you all agree for this? Yes. Okay. Then what does the cage stand for? Yes. Lack of freedom. Lack of freedom. Good. Then who can clarify this idea? Look at the poem. Yes. The line, should I be a rock, suggests that she should not react to anything. Okay. Anything else? The line, should I be unreal, all this. Okay. So here also. Should I be a rock? Should I be lifeless? Okay, good. Uh, what is the theme of second stanza? Group 2, what you have written? The girl's fear and anxiety of being insecure. The girl's fear and anxiety being insecure. Okay, could you explain it? Anyone from your group? Yes. The line, where can I take shelter, suggests that she is insecure. The line, where can I take shelter, okay, it suggests that she is insecure, okay. Then what is the theme of third stanza? Yes? The girl's agony. The girl's agony. Agony for, of what? The whole world is criticized her. The whole world criticizes her, good. You have just seen how the teacher facilitated the thinking and the talking process among the students. Each and every student was given a chance to try and express their thoughts. Some students could, some found it a little difficult. But as we all know, it is perfectly fine for the students to not be able to answer. It's not really a big problem. Now, the next step is to identify instances from real life situations which the students can relate to the theme or the sub theme which is presented through the poem given to them. Let us continue watching the classroom video. The theme of the first stanza is the grief of the girl child as she has lost freedom. Can you suggest any incidents from the real life? Yes. The mother scolds the girl as she comes home late, but she does not scold the boy who does the same thing. Yeah. When girls come late, 
mother scolds the child and when the same thing is done by the boy they don't scold okay uh, any other incidents yes two boys are playing cricket the uh, the girl joins her her father happens to see this and scolds her when the boys are playing cricket in the ground if girl want to join them generally parents they don't allow the girl okay so we have identified two instances from real life where the girl feels that she is insecure okay the mother scolds the girl as she comes home late but she does not scold the boy who does the same thing and when two boys are playing cricket and the girl joins her her father happens to see this and scolds her she goes home crying okay now where does this uh, first incident took place yes at home at home and what about the second incident yes in the ground in the ground so whether it is in home or outside she feels the same thing now that the themes and the sub themes have been identified the next important aspect is to try and find out the location of where the action is taking place the first location of the action is the home and the second is near the playground at home you saw that for coming home late the mother is scolding the girl but when the boy comes home late the parents are not scolding him later on in the second action which happened on the playground you see that the two boys were playing and the girl wanted to go and join them but the father saw the girl playing and then he dragged her away from there he did not let the girl play over there so this way you can see how the theme of the oppression of the girl child is being brought out from this particular action which you have just seen after you have identified the location or the setting of the action it is important to identify the characters involved perhaps you can try and identify the main characters in this let us watch the clipping who are the characters here yes the girl the boy the mother so there are three characters mother girl and boy now what about the second instance yes two boys the girl child and the father two boys the girl child and the father so we have identified location that is a, a location for the first instance is home and for the second instance is playground and even we have identified the characters also for first instance like girl boy and mother and for second instance the girl two boys father and even we need chorus also okay to create playground and all that can somebody try to say which characters were involved yes mother father and their uh, male child and female child very good that is correct now the next important thing to do is to try and decide the entire sequence of the actions and remember the classroom teacher has to make the students do it let us go back to the video and see how this takes place now next next we have to write actions okay so now all of you sit in groups and write actions for now we have sequence of actions for scene 1 okay the chorus said the first location that is home and mother comes out from indoor she is restless she looks outside but is disappointed the girl reaches home mother scolds her that is only miming only then the girl questions her mother mother beats the girl 
and drag her indoors then the boy comes home and mother smiles at him the chorus move out from the stage okay so this is for first instance now we have a sequence of actions for second instance that is two boys are playing cricket the girl joins her and her father happens to see this and scolds her she goes home cry so now this is scene 2 now the chorus enters and set the playground like a uh, standing as trees and moving their hands like branches two boys enter the stage they get ready to play cricket one boy bowls and the other bats the girl enters and watches them play she requests them to include her in the game the boys hesitate but finally agrees the girl bowls father comes there and sees in his daughter playing with boys he gets angry and drags the girl away he beats the girl and the girl cries the chorus exist okay so shall we perform choreography yes yeah well now that you have just finished watching this video you can say that the choreography script of the first two stanzas of the poem have been played by the students in the video what do you think is needed as a next step you have the actions in place you have the lyrics the wordings of the song what do you need to make the song sound better can somebody try to answer that tune yes very good so what with tune can you elaborate a little mm, music and uh, lyrics okay very good that is correct now uh, a tune is needed to complete the song there can be a team of singers perhaps the students who are good at their singing can be chosen at this juncture the performers the ones who are very good in acting can perform the actions of the two stanzas and put up a small skit in front of the class let us watch how the children are performing this particular choreography
seen that choreography is an ideal pedagogical or teaching tool for an inclusive language learning classroom. You can have students whether they are good at singing or dancing to have a role to play as you have yourself mentioned some time back. Yes or no? Yes. All right, good. Traditionally, we have seen that in most cases, schools tend to focus either on the mathematical ability or the language ability of the students. But today we know differently. It is a well established fact that there can be intelligences which a student exhibits even beyond these two types of intelligences. The focus is no longer only on reading, writing and arithmetic. It has moved beyond that. While many students function well in that kind of an environment, there are others who need to be given more chance to explore other things and other spheres of their intelligences as well. It is in this backdrop that today we will know about Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Gardner argues that intelligence, particularly as it is traditionally defined, does not sufficiently encompass the wide variety of human abilities. His theory has emerged from recent cognitive research and documents the extent to which students possess different kinds of minds and therefore learn, remember, perform and understand in different ways. To quote Howard Gardner, we are all able to know the world through language, logical mathematical analysis, spatial representation, musical thinking, the use of the body to solve problems or to make things, an understanding of other individuals and an understanding of ourselves. Where individuals differ is the strength of these intelligences, the so-called profile of intelligence and in this way in which such intelligences are invoked and combined to carry out different tasks, solve diverse problems and progress in various domains. The idea of multiple intelligences comes out of psychology. It's a theory that was developed to document the fact that human beings have very different kinds of intellectual strengths and that these strengths are very, very important in how kids learn and how people represent things in their minds and then how people use them in order to show what it is that they've understood. If we all had exactly the same kind of mind and there was only one kind of intelligence, then we could teach everybody the same thing in the same way and assess them 
in the same way, and that would be fair. But once we realize that people have very different kinds of minds, different kinds of strengths, some people are good in thinking spatially, some people are good in thinking language, other people are very logical, other people need to do hands-on, they need to actually explore actively and to try things out. Once we realize that, then a education which treats everybody the same way is actually the most unfair education because it picks out one kind of mind, which I call the law professor mind, somebody who's very linguistic and logical, and says, if you think like that, great. If you don't think like that, there's no room in the train for you. The nine intelligences which Howard Gardner identifies are verbal linguistic, logical mathematical, visual spatial, bodily kinesthetic, musical rhythmical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic,